Hello, St. Augustine Road Baptist Church. So it is uh, Wednesday, uh, March 25th, and I just wanted to put out a video. Really, this is just a, a quick, small Bible study um, that I wanted to get out for a Revolve student ministry, um, but it's really for anyone to enjoy. So uh, this video is going to be posted to Facebook. It's going to be on our website at sarbaptistchurch.com and also on YouTube. And I say that to ask our church congregation for some help. So our youth is, uh, our group is aged from 6th grade through 12th grade, um, is what Revolve uh, Ministries is, and practically none of our youth have Facebook. Um, a lot of their parents, you guys have Facebook, but our youth themselves don't have Facebook. Uh, Facebook is old people uh, places, I guess, if you will. Uh, they are on Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and Twitch. And all these places I don't even try and keep up with really anymore. So I'm going to need your help. Uh, for those of you that have youth that are in the program, uh, please show them this video on Facebook um, or remind them, hey, Mr. Curtis put a video out there. You can find it on YouTube. Um, I know they're on YouTube. So um, if you have a student that's in our ministry, please uh, show them this video um, so they, they can get to it. I'll also be sending out a text message to them so they know that it's available. But I want to put out just a small, quick Bible study, but um, just for a couple of announcements as we uh, find our new normal uh, in our day-to-day -day right now as everything's kind of upside down with this coronavirus. Um, we're going to be looking at doing some more content and things like that. Um, so next Wednesday, a week from today, uh, I'm actually going to be setting up a Zoom uh, meeting with our youth, those that are interested, um, that we can have a big video chat as a group uh, so that we can get together and talk to each other and, and just interact uh, in that way online. So that's going to be next Wednesday. Um, some more information about that is coming, but um, our youth can download that Zoom meeting app um, on their phones, on tablets, on um, on laptops. I believe that's what the school system is using to do uh, some of their chatting, so I know it's readily available. So look for that to come uh, for our Revolve Student Ministries next Wednesday. Um, but I wanted to just put out a little Bible study, um, and this is probably one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible that we're going to be talking about, and this is Jonathan and his armor bearer. Um, and I just want to share it with our youth. I know I've shared it a little bit before, but um, hopefully they um, can get something from this. If they take something away, maybe some encouragement or, or hearing a, a Bible story that they haven't heard before. So I'm excited to share, but I want to start uh, with a word of prayer. So. Dear God, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this time, God, and this chance to come together in this, in this different way, God, of, of social media, of online content right now, as our, our normal has been kind of disrupted with this coronavirus. But God, uh, you have a plan and you have a purpose for what's going on right now, as hard as it might be to see and to realize and understand what that is, um, God, that you, you will have your way with this. Um, God, and if anything, blessings are coming out of this situation of time with family, um, time to relax, time to unwind, more time to be in your word. Um, all the, the hustle and bustle of daily life has kind of been put aside for a second. Um, God, and so I pray that we just use our time to focus on you um, in this time. God, I pray that you just bless us in the study as we read your word. God, we thank you and we love you. In your wonderful, glorious name we pray. Amen. Um, so like I said, this is just going to be a quick small study, um, a quick story really. So this is about Jonathan and his armor bearer um, fighting a, a battle against the Philistines. And this can be found in 1 Samuel um, chapter 14 is where we are going to pick up. And we're going to read 14 uh, or chapter 14 verses 1 through 14. Um, and I'll be reading out of the Holman Christian Standard Bible. That's the, uh, the version that I use with our youth just because it's a little bit easier uh, to read and kind of understand. So we'll pick up at verse 1. It says, That same day Saul's son, Jonathan, said to the attendant who carried his weapons, Come, let's cross over to the Philistines' garrison on the other side. However, he did not tell his father. Saul was staying under the pomegranate tree in Migron on the outskirts of Jebeth. The troops with him numbered about 600. Ahijah, who was wearing a ephod, was also there. He was the son of Ahitab. I'm terrible with names and pronunciation, so bear with me as I, as I butcher these. But uh, the brother of Ichabod, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the Lord's priest at Shiloh. But the troops did not know that Jonathan had left. There were sharp columns of rock on both sides of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine garrison. 
One was named Bozes and the other Snehe. One stood to the north in front of Michmash and the other to the south in front of Jebba. Jonathan said to the attendant who carried his weapons, Come on, let's cross over the garrison of these uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will be with us. Nothing can keep the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. His armor bearer responded, Do what is in your heart. You choose. I'm right here with you, whatever you decide. All right, Jonathan replied. We'll cross over to the men and then let them see us. If they say, wait until we reach you, then we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, come on up, then we will go up because the Lord has handed them over to us. That will be our sign. They let themselves be seen by the Philistine garrison. And the Philistine said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they've been hiding. The men of the garrison called to Jonathan his armor bearer, come on up, we'll teach you a lesson. They said, follow me, Jonathan told his armor bearer, for the Lord has handed them over to Israel. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and his feet and his armor bearer behind him. Jonathan cut them down and his armor bearer followed and finished them off. In that first assault, Jonathan and his armor bearer struck down about 20 men in a half acre field. So that's where we are going to we are going to stop. And, and this story goes on a little bit further. You can uh, read the rest of chapter 14. Um, but what I want to look at is I want to look at Jonathan, but I really want to look at Jonathan's armor bearer. So Jonathan had this mind and this, uh, he felt led by God to go to the Philistine garrison and to wage war, you know, on his own. He wasn't, he wasn't content with just staying and sitting and waiting um, for what Saul was doing. So he left his, his father, he left the troops that were there, and he took uh, just his armor bearer um, to go. And they were going to do something because he believed that God was going to work through the few just like he would work through the many. And so he saw himself and his armor bearers, the few, and was going to go do something. He was going to take some action. So he decided to go. And first of all, um, they, it says there were sharp columns of rock on both sides of the path. So already just the journey is a little perilous, I think, in this situation. I kind of picture them, you know, uh, scaling the sides of this rock mountain uh, pass to get to where the Philistines were camped, their garrison. Um, and so already that kind of uh, passage was probably pretty treacherous and almost dangerous in itself. And so Jonathan's armor bearer could have been like, well, that's, that's kind of a sketchy like path. That's kind of a, a, a sharp, dangerous uh, area to go. And I, I don't want to get hurt. Um, you know, at, at that point, he could have just been like, the, the journey's too difficult. Like, I'm not going to go. Um, but instead, uh, he goes right there with him. He's right behind him, right beside him as they go. But as they get closer, as they get to the part uh, where they're about to be spotted, you know, they're, they're talking to one another. And Jonathan says, you know, we will show ourselves. We will expose, expose ourselves to the Philistines. And if they see us and they say, come on up, then, then we'll come on up. That means the Lord has delivered um, them into our hands. And we are going to be successful uh, in, in taking them down. But if they, if they, you know, see us and they say, you know, stop right there, then we're going to stay right there. We're not going to go up. And so that's kind of what he's feeling led by God to do of, of that's how he's going to see that God has, has, has blessed what they're doing and he's going to be a part of it and he's going to take care of them um, and conquer on their behalf. And so that faith in believing of what God was going to do is just wild. But I think what's amazing to really look at is the armor bearer and his willingness to follow Jonathan. Because if Jonathan is getting this from God, if he has um, this spiritual wisdom and, and guidance from the Lord of saying, you know, I'm going to deliver them into your hands. You know, he's being told that from God. You know, Jonathan is not necessarily the armor bearer. Right. You know, Jonathan is confident in, in feeling what God is leading him to do. But the armor bearer is just following Jonathan. You know, he's maybe not hearing this directly from God of, you know, God telling the armor bearer, like, this is what's going to happen. And I'm going to protect you and I'm going to deliver you and, and I'm going to be with you and conquer with you. You know, he had to take that step of faith in following Jonathan in the immediate, you know, right there. And so that's what he replied. He said, do what is in your heart. You choose. I am right here with you, whatever you decide. And I think there's something to be learned from that. One, there's something to be learned from, from Jonathan and truly trusting in the Lord against all odds of this. this. It says that there were 20 men in a half-acre field. Like 
that's a lot of fighting power right there that the Philistines had against Jonathan and his armor bearer. Um, but they were confident enough and, and believed that God was going to work through them enough um, that God told them to go, and he was willing to do that. He was willing to go. Um, but it was also the faithful one that was beside him that I think is important and something that we can take away from is that, is that the people who are guiding us, the people who are directing us in our lives, and, and this is where I'm really talking to you youth, is the people that God has put in your life to direct you, to guide you, um, that, that you know, are leading you in your life, trust that they are trusting in God, right? Trust that they know what's best for you. So right now, where things are kind of upside down in the world, and you're spending a lot of time at home, you know, where you wouldn't spend as much time with your parents, you wouldn't spend as much time with your siblings, um, and, and you're being told what to do, you know, this would be a, a good time to, to follow along, have faith, have trust, um, that God has a plan that is, he's guiding someone through in your life right now. Because luckily, at your age, you're not making some of these really tough decisions that our world is having to make at the moment. Our, our government, our, our mayors, our governors, our president, um, our vice president, who's making these really tough decisions about what's going on. Uh, your parents, as they figure out the new norm in the house, as you are at school at home and, and not going to you know, social events and concerts and, and parties or, or, or just whatever, social gatherings at all, um, that they are making these decisions and it's for your good. Um, even though you might not see it, even though you might not understand exactly what's happening, you know, have faith that they are following what God is calling them to do and what God is calling them to make these decisions um, and pray for them. You know, pray for your parents um, as they make these tough decisions, as they deal with what's going on in their world with a lot of uncertainty in, in the economy and work. And, you know, our hours going to get cut back, our paycheck's still going to be coming, you know, all these scary things that, you know, grownups have to deal with. Um, have faith and have trust of, of following them. You know, have a, have a good spirit about you. Have a good um, attitude about it of, you know, I'm with you. You know, whatever you choose, I'm right here. Whatever you decide, um, just follow along. It goes for our pastor as well as he makes decisions for our church of how we are supposed to navigate this time. It's just, it's completely unprecedented. And so we should be tasked as the body of Christ, as the body of our congregation of following our pastor and saying, you know, we trust that God is leading you in a direction for a reason. Um, and we're going to stand beside you um, as you do that, as you guide us. And so I hope that you are encouraged by that um, as we go through these uncertain times, as things are a little bit different, um, that, you, that you follow your parents with a happy heart and a happy attitude, uh, even when they're making you do school um, and you don't want to, or um, that you're just getting antsy because you've been in the house all week and you just want to get out, but you can't um, really just... Pray to God and say, God, I know that you have a plan, that you have a purpose for what's going on right now. I might not be seeing it. I might not be receiving it firsthand, um, but I'm choosing to follow you through those people that you are guiding me in my life right now. Your parents, your teachers, our pastor, uh, our local government, um, our country's government as we go through this time. So hopefully you take something from this, you learn something from this. Um, I just think it's a great story because I could just see where it could go the other way of, of Jonathan's arm being like, no, nope, I'm not doing that. You are nuts. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. No, nope, not safe. We're going to die. Uh, definitely. Um, but instead, he has faith uh, in Jonathan who is putting his trust and his faith. Uh, in the Lord, and that's what's so important. So hopefully you take something from that, um, and hopefully maybe it'll make a turn this week as you've been a little antsy at the house or maybe a little rebellious with your parents or siblings. Um, but hopefully uh, this encourages you. And, and so um, I love you. I miss you guys. I can't wait to, uh, to see what our new normal becomes. Um, as you guys know, we do prayer board in the back where we put up our prayer requests um, and we write them down. And then we get to, when we see God answer a prayer, we erase them and we all get to clap. We still want to continue that in some way, shape or form. So if you have more prayer requests, please send them to me. Um, you can text them to me. You guys all have my number. Um, but for anybody that doesn't, my phone number is 904-803-7369. Just send your prayer requests to me. I will keep an updated track um, so that we can be praying for those things. Um, you can also go to our website, our church's website, sarbaptistchurch.com. There's a contact us tab. 
and you can fill out um, your name, your email address, and a brief message, and you can just put uh, questions or suggestions of what you guys want to see for some online content, Bible studies, uh, Bible stories, whatever you want. Sorry guys, the video cut out. Bear with us as we're trying to uh, learn this new uh, media that we're doing with, uh, with cameras and video editing and things like that. But um, what I was saying was, uh, remember guys to be sending in prayer requests and things like that under the contact us section of our website. Um, sending in prayer requests, questions, um, suggestions on what you guys want to see in videos, Bible studies um, or Bible stories, things like that. Just let me know. Um, I'll be checking that email that it gets sent to um, so that we can stay in contact in that way so that we can keep updating our prayer board uh, in the back and we can see God answering uh, your prayers. So um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, reach out to me. Again, I miss you guys so much. It's so weird not seeing you um, so often. And Miss Courtney loves you, uh, misses you. She's going to be uh, filming her uh, Sunday morning Bible study with you guys. Um, of the uh, right now, they're they're finishing up uh, twelve extraordinary women in the Bible and what we can learn from them. And so she's going to be doing a, a recording of that, so y'all can keep going uh, with what you're learning in Sunday school, even though we're not meeting. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But love you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, share it with your family. Share it with your friends. Um, whoever needs to see it. And, and we pray uh, that God is with you, that he continues to bless you um, as we figure out our new normal. So love y'all. Talk to you later.